uh, welcome to the um, to the roundtable for hoaxes, misinformation, and data right. No, it's not the roundtable where we spread hoax, but we are going to talk about it. And uh, basically, this roundtable is a derivative of our big theme, which is technology and humanity. And uh, and we think that this is also an important um, aspect um, concerning the um, misinformation and how the flow of information in the digital world. As we all all know, that in the past um, eight months, almost a year, that uh, we are mostly working online. We are mostly uh, doing our activities online and offline, and uh, not offline due to the COVID-19 situation. But even before that, in Asia, in Global South, in a lot of countries, digitalization is actually a very hot issue where people are more and more people are going to the digital world, more and more people are experiencing their first online, um, online interactions with others. And this create a huge acceleration, um, both in good thing and bad thing. If you're talking about the good thing, then we have an acceleration of information. People can study faster, people can do businesses um, even in the remote places. But we're also thinking about the challenges that might happen when we are having this, um, this, this accelerations in information. And some of the challenges are something that we feel uh, closely in our life right now. Uh, because uh, just now, we, uh, like I said, we have a COVID-19 situation. Some of the hoaxes and misinformations are coming uh, because of this um, pandemic. But there are also major events throughout the world that that based, that um, hoaxes and misinformation also exist. We just we just uh, conclude the U U.S. elections uh, just now. Just uh, then the the result just being announced a couple of days ago. There is also ripe with a lot of misinformation. Even even some of the even even some of the leaders in for uh, coming. Even some of the information coming from the leaders are being flagged as a, as as being a, a a misinformation. So that there is there is a challenge that are happening right now. Now joining me in this uh, roundtable, I'm very pleased to announce there are these three um, awesome organizations that are tackling these issues um, in their respective field. So before we go forward with the discussion, allow me to introduce uh, you to all the panelists that we have here. First, we have Mazek from Mafindo. And then the second, we have Budina Haryana from Sejiwa. And then last but not least, we have Pak Doni from ICT Watch. Now, um, I, 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 I'm able to um, introduce you to the organization, but I would love to hear the introductions coming from each of the um, organization's uh, leader that, that are present in this panelist. So first of all, can I have uh, Budina to explain a little bit about Sejiwa Ibu? Please. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mas Aryo. My name is Dina Haryana from Sijua Foundation. It is a nonprofit organization working on um, child protection, both in um, online and offline settings. So we started in 2004. So it's been quite a while. Thank you, Ibu. Uh, next, Pak Doni. Hello everyone. Uh, actually, ICT Watch is a civil society, civil society organization established since uh, 2002, I believe. It's quite a long time ago. Uh, we focus on the issues of uh, digital literacy as well as the online freedom of expression. But now, uh, hand in hand, together with other organizations like Mapindo, and so they want to combat the, you know, disinformation, misinformation, especially, especially about uh, online hoax. Thank you. Thank you, Padoni. Uh, last but not least, Mazek. Uh, thank you, Aryo. It's very, it's really great to be here. Uh, so I'm coming from Mapindo. Mapindo is a, a grown-up uh, community uh, since 2016. So we are focusing on dealing with the uh, misinformations or disinformation, and then uh, we uh, we have uh, four pillars. The first one is the doing the fact checking. We are one of the international fact checking network certified in Indonesia, and also uh, collaborating with uh, major media uh, on uh, collaborating on fact checking, and also we do the digital literacy, collaborating with Mas Doni, Asiti Watch, uh, Budina from Sitiwa, and 
many others uh, and also uh, we like to uh, create like uh, gatherings uh, between uh, 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 people and then uh, doing public campaign on like a car free days even uh, so we would like to say that uh, fighting misinformation is important but we like to do it by fun thank you yes and here we are we are trying to have fun with this panel uh well we're talking about possibly a very serious issues but but we don't want to make it very formal and very serious because i think it's important for everyone to understand that this is not only our privilege to be in digital world but this is also obligations to uh somewhat safeguarding it uh not for only for us but also for the environment now let's let's go directly to the um to the main um main course that we are going to talk about which is her hoaxes, misinformation, and data rights. Uh, this is three separate issue, uh, but I want to go first with the with the first uh, about hoaxes and misinformation because this is something that's really close to us. Even um, we might experience it already today or even yesterday or in, the, in, 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 in our daily lives. So what are actually the challenges that, that we, are, we, are, we are facing right now? And how do you, how do you see the challenge develop you know, I think uh, from year to year, we, we face a different challenges in hoaxes and misinformations. I would like to invite Mazek to um, give us a little bit of perspective about hoaxes from year to year. Mazek, could you please enlighten us a little bit? Well, uh, uh, hoax is actually a global phenomenon, but of course, uh, Indonesia uh, as a very diverse nation, and also we have a quite... Uh, a complexity regarding the race, uh, racial distributions, and also the religions. Uh, so, uh, misinformation would uh, play very uh, important role on disorganized uh, the country. So, I would I would like to say that uh, dealing with with the uh, misinformation is now is uh, everybody challenge. It's not only about political issues, but also like a disaster issues. Like when we deal now with the pandemic. Uh, Indonesia is ranked number five in the world uh, as a country that spread most rumor and also stigma and also conspiracy theories. So uh, sometimes uh, we would we would like to see that it is quite difficult, uh, even actually because of the uh, literacy rate of Indonesian people is not uh, even. But uh, we think the bright side is that collaboration exists. I mean, uh, we are quite fortunate that uh, we have uh, Bastoni, uh, Budina, we are collaborating to work together inside a group called uh, Super Creasi. It is a national uh, movement for uh, li uh, digital literacy. It is a kind of uh, very distinct, distinct, uh, distinct, distinct distinction uh, in Indonesia to, to help us on uh, fighting the misinformations. But of course, uh, the media is also uh, contributing a lot. I mean, uh, if we see it like uh, three years before, there is no media that are creating like a fact check uh, special specific channels, but now, Almost major, more major medias, they, they do the fact checking uh, channels like a Tempo, like Jakarta Post, like Compass, and etc. So I would say uh, we, we need to, to make sure that our ecosystem uh, that is actually growing fast uh, can deal with the problem such as a big nations with a la large diversity. So I think collaboration is a must uh, to deal with uh, the future challenges like a deep fake, like uh, increasing. Uh, video content uh, that spread as uh, misinformation. So that's my my point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mazek. I think we, we have uh, two different perspectives where at some extent that the challenge is increasing, but at the other extent, like you said, collaboration exists. We have three wonderful organizations here. Also, the media has done their job. And let's see how those um, collaborations can tackle one of the unexpected issue that happened in 2020, which led me directly to Padoni. Padoni, you're, you're also involved in COVID-19 uh, task force, if I'm not mistaken, but also ICT Watch has been dealing a lot with with, um, with a safe internet uh, pre in previous era. Now, facing this global pandemic, but not only Indonesia, but also worldwide, how do you see and how do you perceive and what is your perspective regarding the flow of information in, in, in this pandemic? Oh, yeah, uh, first of all, we have around 2,000, 
200,000 uh, internet user if I'm not mistaken is based on the latest uh, Indonesia ISP Association uh, research ya. 200 juta. Ya, 200 200,000 ya, 200 juta. Uh, ya, yeah, internet million. user Indonesia. 200 million sorry 200 million uh, uh, internet user in Indonesia. So yes uh, as Mas Jack already mentioned that we, we yes we, we do have the good collaboration uh, among the civil society among the society and we and we also have the uh, great partnership with other multi stakeholders like uh, with government or uh, private sector and as well as the as the academ academia but the challenge is um, we need more of the engagement we need uh, more stakeholders to engage with this kind of collaboration not only for uh, the sake of uh, issue in the downstream but also on the upstream so in digital literacy issue we always uh, use this uh, 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 this word, yeah, upstream and downstream. In the downstream, we means that uh, if you have to do uh, reactively, if there is something cases happen, then you know we, we can do some things uh, together to, to to tackle this issue. But in the upstream, it means it's we more uh, 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 proactively preventive uh, action. Um, there is still a view of stakeholders that able or willing to work on the upstream side. Why? Because it's something that we cannot really measure the impact directly in the very uh, short term. It's like what we call it, yeah, uh, invest investment is like education you, you you cannot see clearly the impact let's say in the next three months no you cannot do that we we can measure the investment like the education or digital literacy issue maybe in the long term like in the next five years or ten years so not everyone happy if they have a program if they have money if they have resources and then if we ask them to join this upstream uh, movement and they will, okay, but it's quite a long uh, 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 time to see the impact. Our program is only for two years, our program only for three years. So something if we, if we ask them to join us, they, they, are, not, uh, uh, they are not so happy to, to, uh, to join the, or not quite patient to, to do that. But also um, the thing that we, I want to highlight is it's based on the MIT. They, they, they did a research, they delivered the result of the research in 2018 about how the uh, false online, uh, the false news spread uh, to, uh, through the online media. So according to them, they found that it took uh, it took the truth approximately six times as long as uh, the falsehood to reach the same numbers of people. So you can imagine that if uh, the hoax deliver uh, in the media social at this time, for example. So if we want to deliver the, the the truth to tackle the the hoax one it will take six time uh, longer rather than the hoax one so it really uh, what we call it uh, it really set situation because not it's we need a lot of uh, we need more people to join our uh, movement but it's very limited uh, uh, stakeholders want to join us but in the other hand the hoax 
is move faster than the uh, the, the clarification itself. If we talk about the uh, this infodemic about COVID-19, according to Ministry of Indonesian ICT, a Ministry ICT of Indonesia, uh, from January to today, it's already around uh, 1,200 hoax locally in Bahasa Indonesia about coronavirus and, and vaccine. So it means it's around five hoax per day created and distributed online about COVID-19, about vaccine. And it's a very dangerous when we have to combat the COVID-19 and we relate and we, of course, we depends on two things like the uh, uh, health protocol and the vaccination. But if only a few people believe on the vaccine, you know that today there's a research released by IPOS, if I'm not mistaken, in Indonesia, only 60% uh, people in Indonesia, they want to get vaccinated. The other 40%, they don't want to get vaccinated. Maybe they're afraid because they uh, read the hoax information, but uh, or maybe they uh, just uh, one of the anti vaccine uh, uh, people. But if we want really to combat COVID-19 in Indonesia, it must around 80% get vaccinated. But today, only 60% believe that uh, the vaccine has a, a good impact for the, for, the, for the COVID. So it's also because the, the, the hoax. It's also because the disinformation that running faster than the uh, uh, clarification delivered by Mavindo, or by the government, or by the committee of the COVID-19. So this is, I want to share my concern first. Thank you, thank you, but this is very interesting, six times. So it's not only effort, but there are also costs and resources that, that needs to be put forward. And this is very concerning because um, it's very easy to spread hoax. It's very easy to create misinformation. It's very easy, especially when you have WhatsApp or you know smartphones in your hands right now. And, and I think that's this is something that's worry us so much. But not only is worry us as an individual, but also worry us how it ha how it's going to affect our society. And when we are talking about society, we have a lot of um, vulnerable societies. Not 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 talk not only talking about. Um, educations, but also talking about age, and and this is exactly what I want to tap into. But before I go to Budian, Budina, um, for everyone attending here, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat, and then we will discuss it uh, after I, after Budina share uh, her thought. Budina, this is very interesting. We see we see some worrying things, although we also see uh, some um, uh, potential good things from Mazek and Padoni regarding the effort that we have so far. But seeing from your perspective, Bu, as the one that uh, see the future of Indonesia, the young generations, they, they, they I, I quote Dr. Park before that, that usually uh, social activity from uh, underage should be limited. They, you, 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 should, uh, you need to be 13 years old before you have a social media account, but that's not the case in Indonesia. So what do you think, Ibu, um, for what is the challenge and, and what, what is your perspective regarding this? Probably yes. um, more importantly about data rights, uh, hoax, misinformation, and now also data rights, Ibu. Yeah. yeah, basically children are the vulnerable, you know, society, and they are caught in the middle of all this situation. And they do not have enough knowledge to be able to identify whether it is hoax or not. Therefore, you know, they tend to believe in whatever is there. And um, unfortunately, yeah, children can be influenced so easily by anybody. And that is a worry. That's why you can see demonstration. Many of the, you know, those demonstrators on the street, children have been used, you know, and how can they be there on the street? Because 
they follow certain kind of hoax, believing something that probably is not there. So uh, that is one thing that I'm worried about. And, and being in the demonstration, for instance, it's not safe at all for them. And so uh, that's one thing. So they can be victims of any kinds of hoax. But at the same time, I'm also seeing another uh, issue, which is about cyberbullying. And, and cyberbullying is huge. And in a way, it is like hoax, right? Because uh, they receive some kind of um, messages, nasty messages, which is not true, maybe about themselves. It's like slandering who they are, you know, and, and that can put the children in such vulnerable situation. They are depressed, they're stressed, um, yet they don't know how to combat that. And unfortunately, one out of two children have been exposed to cyberbullying. And um, as perpetrators or as victims or maybe also as bystander. So um, it is a very concerning thing because cyberbullying, as we can see, and children can be so sensitive. You know, um, so one of the things that, um, for instance, practitioners in psychology, many of, of the, the people coming are children, you know, being uh, the victims of cyberbullying. And so this is one thing that we need to be also um, paying attention to. And therefore, it is important to teach children about, you know, about hoax information, misinformation and all that, and making sure that they understand the, the, the impacts, you know, to other people. But above all, they also need to understand that we, we do have undang-undang ITE, which is um, information transaction law, isn't it, Mas Doni? And uh, that the, the content of that law is putting uh, anybody who puts hoaxes um, to other people and creating victims to others. Basically, they can be put in jail, you know, and, and maximum six months, and they might be fined for one billion, you know, um, for, for that action. So children need to know about consequences because very um very easy for them to also cyber bully the somebody that they don't like children can be very uh, impulsive as well so um they might do cyber bullying to you know other children and therefore understanding this law is very important but also one other thing that i, I am um you know um really concerned about is their lack of understanding of um, digital footprint, um, meaning you know whatever they post in on the social media, actually it brings um, impact, you know, uh, consequences to themselves. Uh, so, so the posting will stay forever, and they don't quite understand that. And one day maybe they're going to um, apply for a job or they want to apply for scholarship, you know, their um, background will be checked. And you know, that is something that can really put them into a bad situation. Therefore, a big campaign against uh, cyberbullying, and then also a big campaign to make children understand about the consequences of negative digital footprint. That's also something that needs to be taught to children. And so, and also that uh, undang undang ITE, the law of, of uh, transactional information. So these things are, are things that we need to put forward. And yeah, we need to be active on that. Also, the other thing is making sure that parents take responsibility as well to educate children on those elements about cyberbullying, about Undang Undang ITE, the law, as well as um, digital footprint. And you can see that um, even though a lot of people now, as Mas Doni had said, 200 million internet users are there in Indonesia. But the uh, digital parenting understanding of that or, or literacy on digital parenting is still very low. So this huge amount of um, 
you know, parents allowing children to be fully engaged with internet yeah, online without any protection at all. And they allow children to be in the room, you know, not knowing by three o'clock in the morning, they're still online. So, and then cyberbullying is 24 hours, for instance. Hoaxes are 24 hours. So really parents need to be taught massively on, on you know, the consequences of uh, being children being on the internet that they should be protected. So that's my, my take on this, Mas Aryo. Thank you, thank you so much, Ibu. It's very, um, yeah, I, I, I get your point. I mean, you back then I, I was 11 when I first uh, create my social media account. I remember mm. back then it's Friendster. <laughs> I, I'm mm. a, yeah, that, that's that's bad. And and and, and I, I've been faced with cyberbullying, and I'm sure a lot of people here are also ever experienced um, not only bullying but might also be cyberbullying. Budina, uh, Padoni, and Mazek. Um, we, we, we are about to close this session, unfortunately. Um, uh, actually, uh, if there are questions that want to be raised, I would really suggest everyone to connect to the swap card and get connected to these three wonderful speakers so that uh, you can ask your questions directly to them. But before we, we close this, can I have just one minute from each of the panelists about what we can do individually to, to guard this? Um, freedom uh, uh, of information, but but do it responsibly. Mazek, probably just a short Mazek, half a minute, one minute. Well, yeah, uh, I always uh, repeat the lesson from uh, one of our uh, teacher. Uh, uh, he's called the Kusmus, and then he always talks to us that uh, in this time like this, when people are spreading uh, misinformation like fire, so we need to. Uh, Sing waras ojo Allah. I'm not sure how to make it in English. Maybe Masaru can help me. So, like the same people should not stay quiet. We have to speak up. We have to stand up. We have to. Uh, if there's our family, our friends spreading misinformation, then we have to uh, let him know the truth, the clarification. So that's from me. Thank you, thank you, Masak. Uh, Padoni. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, what we need now is, you know, to stop talking nonsense. Do not, you no, know, do not meeting too much. Indonesian people like meeting too much. Coordination. Do the coordination for the sake of coordination. You know, uh, have a zoom here and there. So what we are need really need is now taking a concrete actions. You know, in the field of, uh, like in the field, uh, Mafindo always doing a very great job reviewing hoax content and you know uh, promote it and uh, not promote the hoax but you know deliver to the public to the society uh, about which one is you, you, the information you can believe it which, which one is not also assisting children and vulnerable people <clears throat> as uh, ibu diena and sejiwa uh, always uh, uh, serve the, the society. Maybe also we can do an example like what ICP was doing right now is helping the governments inside the government, helping the governments uh, the, uh, join with the COVID-19 com uh, uh, COVID committee and uh, dealing with the public communication issues, for example, like fighting disinformation through the various uh, uh, existing channels. So, I mean, uh, it's, we need no more concept. We need no more, uh, you know, uh, talking and meeting. Let's do some actions. Uh, whatever it is, uh, whenever it is, it must be very useful if we can move on rather than just sit, talk, and have yet another meeting. It may be this very rather, but you know, this actually <laughs> my concern. Thank you, Varoni. Nato, no action, talk only. <laughs> Budina, close uh, us, Bu, one minute from Ibu. Yeah, so parents are the key actually to the success of children in making them aware about the digital content. 
and how can we do that it's a huge job because we do have 268 million of people in indonesia and over 80 million are children so how can we tap those parents but at the same time how can we tap the children as well to be given this uh, digital literacy as well so both sides parents need to be aware children need to be aware then the awareness is there and hopefully you know all children have, will be protected in indonesia then technology will be a fantastic tool to elevate humankind humanity then you know we will rest in peace one day knowing that we have done our good job <laughs> in the world and so um yeah a lot of work as mas doni had, had has said yeah we need to work together collaborate it is impossible for any one of us to do it on our own. So how can we make everybody, you know, like Dr. Park was saying, so let's join, you know, let, let's, let's really get together and create huge movement in the world. So that's my take on this. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Budina. Thank you, Mazek. Thank you, Padoni. I think uh, a lot of conclusion that I can get from here, but most importantly, I think we need to we need to stop only talking about it. We need to be brave. If we think that we see something that is wrong, something that is not true, we need to be part of the solution and not part of the problems. And also yes. do it not only for our sake, but also for the future generations. Um, and also everyone's, the vulnerable societies like everyone, because every hoax that's out there, you need six times effort to combat that. <laughs> that's a very beautiful quote. Thank you, Padoni.